the police dog waits while a technician runs a changeover on a painting machine called a Five Star. The decorating line stresses flexibility, just like the molding plant in Billund. The same machine can paint a policeman one hour and a jet fighter the next. And once the changeover is complete, the decorators can really move some paint. We can decorate approximately on this type of the machine uh, two and a half thousand pieces every hour. The decorating machines are precisely engineered to keep the tiny pieces steady while they paint every minuscule detail. It's like stamping a seal on the document uh, once again, once again. We are willing to take that extra step and decorate. The little boy will not have to place a tiny sticker in the place where he is expecting the dog's eye. We will make it for him and it will stay there for good. The painting lines are where the hero of every playset comes to life, the minifigure. It was first born in 1974 and took its current shape four years later. In 1978, we launched a minifigure, which was yellow and just smiling, no race, no religion, just a smiley, happy fellow. The minifigure was a huge hit and has played many roles over time and wears many faces, thanks to the decorating machines. Their plants decorate over a quarter of a billion minifigures a year, enough to stretch hand in hand from Billund to Boston. The latest police set gets its own redesigned minifigures. That you can break out. The children really recognize some uh, stereotypical things. So if you, if you look at this guy and he has the, the gold tooth here, um, they really see that as something that makes him a robber. At the same time, his unkempt appearance and his uh, stubble will make him a robber. That's what we learn from kids' tests. And this year's robber gets a disguise for his escape. <laughs> we thought of this little story that the robber broke out of prison and then he got a little jacket that he um, pulled over him, uh, his prison suit. So um, the, the challenge is that it should still be visible because we have to make sure that you can see the striped suit beneath it. Of course, kids will be kids, and small, brightly coloured pieces of plastic are doomed to see their fair share of little mouths. The company counts on parents to guard against choking and the production line to keep the paint both non-toxic and hard to remove. Every production is tested what we call a uh, saliva test and it's the, it is the liquid which is uh, very similar to the type of liquid you use, you have in your mouth. And basically we put these lovely bricks into that liquid and try to wash off the paint never comes off. The freshly painted police station set moves on to phase four, the pre-pack line. Workers manually fill every sorting machine with a corresponding element. The pre-packed line divides the Lego pieces for the police station set into smaller groups before going into the boxes. Finely calibrated sorting machines count exact numbers of pieces while keeping the line moving at a fast pace. The air in the plastic bags keeps the pieces from breaking during shipping. At full speed, the line packs over 50,000 bags a day and they get the piece count in each bag right by tracking weight down to the milligram. Every cartridge goes through six weight checkpoints. If the weight is off, the final checkpoint kicks the cartridge out for manual verification. The system has to keep up a steady pace across all pre-pack lines, especially during this time of year. Lego sells more than 50% of its volume in the six weeks leading up to Christmas. There, there's no doubt that, that the pressure, particularly in, in this we, these weeks, on our entire business system is huge. Huge. I mean, we need to pack and ship, particularly ship, so many products every single day. And if that breaks down, it's obviously a, a big problem for us. 
But at the other end of the Klabno plant, there's a glitch. The multi-million euro robotic crane system normally sorts 500 boxes an hour, feeding the elements into the decorating and packaging lines. But now, the entire system is all too quiet. So I would like to ask uh, our technicians if they can do some technical maintenance on it. While empty conveyor belts wait for bricks, the logistics team struggles to troubleshoot the problem. There seems to be a communication breakdown between the computers that plan brick movements and the robotic cranes. The production process has a built-in buffer of nine hours. The situation becomes more dire with every minute. We need to solve it as soon as possible. Immediately. If the system is down longer than the nine hour buffer, the entire plant will have to shut down production. Lego is no stranger to big problems. After all, not too long ago, the company hit a serious rough patch. During the 90s, the markets for toys and children at large in their play behavior changed a lot. As video games grew in popularity, Lego suffered losses for 11 straight years. Unfortunately, we reacted in many different ways, or in, in sometimes in very, in very wrong ways. At the worst stretch, they lost $500 million in just two years. And then, something unusual happened. Hardcore adult fans hacked the single best-selling Lego product, the robotic kit Mindstorms. Mindstorms appeals to die-hard fans because they can literally make their creations come to life. Over half of Mindstorms users are adults. Many companies would have taken the hackers to court, but Lego offered the top hackers toys in exchange for ideas. We realized that the coding they did was a lot better than the one we had done. So we invited them around and asked them why. And they told us because they loved the Lego experience and they just thought the product we had done wasn't as good as it could be. The move fitted in well with an overall shift towards rethinking the company's business strategies. They created new licensed products, including the best-selling Star Wars sets and video games. Lego went on to hack itself streamlining distribution and challenging designers to create new sets with existing pieces. Their gamble paid off in spades. Mindstorm's NXT launched in 2006 and broke sales records. For the classic sets, they refocused every product towards a construction experience. 2004, which was sort of a key turning point for us, we said we dare to believe in the, in the core, we dare to believe that construction is what we do best, but we then did it in a very contemporary way. Back at the Lego plant in Kladno, Czech Republic, technicians are up against a very immediate problem. They're trying to restart the robotic crane system. Hi, Karsten. Unfortunately, we didn't succeed with the restart of the system. And, uh, At least now they're closing in on the cause of the breakdown. The problem is somewhere between uh, the communication of uh, Czech Republic and Swiss. So the IT guys need to solve it. The plant sorting system is run out of an IT department in Switzerland. The Czech workers can only wait while the Swiss technicians work on the problem remotely. There are only 10 minutes left to prevent a production line shutdown. The plant manager prepares to trigger the fail-safe plan. Bring it over to an existing planet that we need to bring into... Uh... If the production floor runs out of elements, the experienced staffers will switch to training the new employees. There's no wasted time at this plant. But before the plan kicks in, the robots are back online. Not the best day in my work here in Colego. Finally, everyone is happy. Production has got the material, and everything is fine now.
they've narrowly avoided a plant shutdown. But the cranes have a lot of catching up to do. The Cladno plant is now back at full speed. From robotic intake to the last stop at the plant, final packaging. The packing line has automated machines to fill play sets of almost any size and shape, but the police station set is an oversized box containing 783 pieces. This set has to be packed by hand. It takes uh, 16 people to pack this box, constantly running in an eight second stack time. So every eight seconds comes one box of the police station out of the line. At this moment, we're packing, uh, in average, at this type of the line, 650 uh, units per hour. At full speed, the team packs one million boxes a week. The fully packed boxes are wrapped and loaded onto trucks and head across town for the final phase, distribution. Lego and DHL partnered in 2005 to run most of LEGO's global distribution from a single warehouse. This distribution centre is um, a mega DC, as we call it. Uh, unless you come and see it, it's hard to describe or uh, even comprehend the volume that's handled through this, the amount of storage we've got, the activities that go on in this facility. It's just huge. The DHL distribution centre stretches half a kilometre long and covers 100,000 square metres. That's 14 football pitches. This site is uh, the biggest site in the Czech Republic and probably one of the biggest in Central Europe. Uh, it's extremely complex to handle the, the work here. Toy stores from all around the world place orders with Lego pickers, who custom fill orders tailored for individual markets. Running most of global distribution out of a single site gives the company a unique advantage. If demand spikes for a certain playset, the entire system from moulding to distribution can meet that need in just 10 days. A small army of forklift operators navigates through 140,000 storage positions to meet the enormous demand. This year we plan to dispatch in excess of 120 million LEGO sets. After 18 months of design and development, moulding, sorting, decoration and packaging, and giant scale distribution, the LEGO City Police Station set meets its toughest test yet, the eight-year-old boy. To see them like lighten up in their faces, uh, smiling is just you you can't explain how that makes you feel. You get you're really proud. So that's that's the best thing. I think he looks like a police dog. They're pretty cool. It looks really like a real police station. The set's look works, but did the story come across? You can open these toilets. That is also really awesome, because then you can really play and uh, do a lot of stuff. And then the robbers can jump out, and then he runs away. And the final verdict. My favorite part of the Lego set is the garage, because you can open and close, and I think it's really cool made. Our most important thing with a set like this is how many boys that we're going to make happy. Yeah. How many boys are we going to have going like, hey, Dad, look, I made this car. So he's going to be all smiley and happy, and he can play with the set for a long time. What the kids don't notice is that the senior designer has built a unique signature right into the set. Uh, one thing we are doing in uh, Lego City is number plates for our cars. On this car, it says TS. That's actually my name, Torben Skov. Since 1934, Lego has rebuilt itself many times over and survived by turning problems into strengths, giving kids of every age new ways to play well, from spare scraps of wood all the way to a toy mega factory.